Rasulullah said, if you are standing, right, sit down. I'm sure many of you have seen when two people are angry, the first thing they do, they, they stand up, right? That's how. They stand up. They don't sit down. The Prophet says, sit down, cool down. No, no, they stand. The Prophet he said, when you are angry, say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim That will cool you down. When two people are fighting and you come to them and you say, say, A'udhu Billahi. What do you think? They say it or they refuse to say it? Tell me. When they are angry, you tell them, Akhi, please say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim They carry on quarreling. Because they don't want to say it. The moment they say, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim they cool down. So this is the second thing. And because of anger, many people are in the jails. They killed someone. You know, you left home peacefully in the morning, driving. And then someone jumped in front of you. So you got very angry. And you insulted him. And you shouted at him. And he stopped his car. And he came out. Started fighting one another. He pulled out the knife and he stabbed you and he killed you. Because of what? Anger. Had you remembered the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ And the servants of the merciful, عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ When the fools talk to them, they say, peace, peace, salam. I'm sorry. He's, he's wrong. I say, I apologize. We don't come down to the level of the fools because we are not fools. The moment you come down to the level of the fool, you become a fool. One wise man, they asked him, how did you become wise man? He said, because of the fools. The fools made me wise. The fools made me wise. They said, how? He said, if I see a foolish man, Doing something foolish, I say to myself, oh, this is a bad habit, I should not have it. So, and I'm living in an ocean of fools, he said. So, quickly I became wise man. Oh, this guy is having bad habit, I should not have it. This guy having bad habit, I should not have it. That's how I became a wise man. So, don't give up to the force of anger, that is reason number two. The third reason why people commit sins is surrendering to one's desire, shahwa. You know, brothers and sisters, there are two gates via which the shaitan accesses this heart. There are two ways the shaitan reaches your heart. One gate is the desires, lusts. The other door or gate is doubts. If you lock these two gates, the shaitan cannot reach your heart. So you keep these two gates closed all the time. The gate of desires and lust, keep it locked. How? You know how? By taqwa. Shaitan tells you, look at this beautiful woman. Say, no, 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 no. I will not. Because there is another woman there in the Jannah. Sisters, no jealousy, please. So when the shaitan tells you, look to this beautiful woman, say to yourself, there is a beautiful woman there in the Jannah. My wife there in the Jannah. She is more beautiful than this one. Right? Huriya. You know the Prophet ﷺ, he described the Huriya. He described one. He said, if one Huriya comes to, uh, looks to the people on earth, he said, if one Huriya removed her Burda, you know the Burda? The, the, the Niqab, the face covering. If she just removed it, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, between the East and the West will be illuminated. East and West will be illuminated. If he spits into the water of the ocean, it will become potable water, drinkable water. But just spit in. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, a Huriya will be wearing 70 dresses and you'll be able to see 
her bone marrow. See? This is there in the Jannah. So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, if the shaitan tells you, drink alcohol, drink khamar. Say, no, 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 no. If I drink khamar, I will not drink khamar over there. There is khamar in the Jannah. Rivers of wine. Rivers of wine in the Jannah. When you sip them, they are very enjoyable, very delicious. Not like the liquor and the khamar in this dunya. When you drink it, you become unconscious. And you start throwing out and you start yeah, doing funny things. So always, brothers and sisters, bear in mind, when Allah tells you, don't do this, because there is something better there. This is how you overcome the desires and the lusts and lower your gaze. Don't watch television. Many of you, they would say this. How can we live without television? I will ask you a simple question, brothers and sisters. Having television at home, does it bring you closer to Allah? Please answer me frankly. Do you feel your iman increases by having television at home? Your iman increases? Does the television help you to bring up your children? Does the television teach morality to your children? So why are you keeping it? When it is destroying you, when it is destroying your family. Destroying you, destroying your family. So that is how you lock the door of the lust and the desires. The other door is the door of doubts. And how I can lock this door, close it? By learning the deen, by the ilm. By the ilm, the knowledge. You learn the deen. You allocate at least two hours a day to learn your deen. Many of us, they got degrees in secular sciences. But the deen, they don't know anything about it, Muslims. Then, a non-Muslim would come to this Muslim and puts doubts in his mind. And then he comes, how to answer this? How to refute this? Because he doesn't have the ilm. Otherwise, he would be able to defend Islam and to give the correct answer. So these are the three reasons. What are they? Reliance upon other than Allah, giving in to anger and surrender to the desires. And that is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized in the book, in one ayah. He summarized that. He says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. They don't call upon Allah another ilah. They rely upon Allah. Because that is Tawheed. Second thing, وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And they don't kill innocent souls, except in the justified way. And people, when they kill one another, when they are angry, anger causes you to kill. And thirdly, وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they do not fornicate, they do not commit fornication, which is the desire. So these are the three root causes of sins, three things. And the way the shaitan can make you to commit the sin is either through the shahawat, lust and desires, or through the shubuhat, doubts. And the remedy for the shahawat, what? What's the remedy for the desires? Taqwa, fear of Allah. And the remedy for the doubts, what? Ilm, the knowledge itself. Now, having said this, brothers and sisters, the sins, Muslim scholars have categorized sins into two compartments. Sins have been classified into two categories, kaba'ir and sagha'ir. Have you heard these words before? Kaba'ir and sagha'ir, major sins and minor sins. Major sins and minor sins. These are the two types of sins. Kaba'ir and sagha'ir, major sins and minor sins. How to differentiate between these types of, two types of sins? The major sin 
كبيرة major sin is any sin that has a prescribed punishment in Islam any sin that has a known known punishment in Islam it's called major sin like fornication like killing someone like drinking alcohol there are known punishment in Islam known penalties so they are major sins is this clear to you also this is one uh, sign by which you can differentiate between major and minor another thing the Quran or the hadith negates the Iman negates Iman for instance the Prophet Sallallahu says Wallahi la yu'min Wallahi la yu'min Wallahi la yu'min Man lam ya'man jaruhu bawa'iqahu He is not a mu'min believer He is not a believer He is not a believer the one who hurts or annoys or disturbs his neighbor or the one whose neighbor is not safe from his injury or his evil so now disturbing one's neighbor whether he's a Christian or Muslim or Hindu whatever is a major sin disturbing the neighbor is a major sin in Islam because the neighbor has many rights on you even if he's not a Muslim not only this in Islam see Islam Islam tells the Muslims that when you buy gifts for your children you buy gifts for the children of your neighbor you know this this is what the Prophet ﷺ said if you buy gifts for your children you buy gifts for the children of your neighbor even if he's not a Muslim and if you cannot afford that you should not let your children come out and play with their toys outside you tell your children you play with the toys inside because if the children take the toys outside the children of your neighbor will start to cry will start to cry and then they come to their dad and they want the, him to buy gifts for them and he cannot do that so you are also bothering and annoying and disturbing your neighbor also among the signs how to know that this sin is a major sin the second sign is that the Prophet Sallallahu is denying the Imam say he's not a mu'min he's not a believer or if there is a curse la'an you know the word la'na la'an if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cursing someone that is also a major sin for instance the Prophet Sallallahu is saying la'an Allahu al-namisa wal mustanmisa Allah's curse upon those who block their eyebrows you know the women they block their eyebrows so blocking the eyebrows is a major sin because the one who does that the, you know blocking the eyebrows women they know that okay it's a major sin because Allah cursed her the one who does that also if the Prophet Sallallahu says that the one who does this thing is not from us like he said Man falaysa minna. he who cheats us is not from us so cheating is what major major sin is a major sin so now we have major sins and we have minor sins the major sins Allah will not forgive them unless you make a sincere tawbah sincere Tawbah. And you say, Oh Allah, I am quitting, I am leaving it. I will give up this, I will not do it again. Then Allah will forgive you that major sin. But the minor sins, they will be forgiven by default. Like now we are going to pray, inshallah. So the, the prayer washes the minor sins. The salah washes away the minor sins because we know when we came here by mistake we saw something here something that you know in the newspaper you see something so these minor sins will be washed away by the salah 